Okay, one of the things I wanted to share uh, about this Bedini lid motor and the reason I think it worked when it really shouldn't have worked probably, but it has to do with this coil. And um, when I got to building another project and wrapped another coil, I realized I hadn't explained something about the coil. And this uh, Bedini motor circuit, which is this part of the system right in here, uses a different kind of coil than is standardized. And this is what happened. It was just the way I did it. It was a fluke. I bought this uh, package of magnet wire, which comes with three rolls. It comes with a 22-gauge, uh, 26-gauge, uh, and 30-gauge. Now, the 30-gauge is the red wire, and the 26-gauge is the green wire but they come in different lengths and the green wire is uh, 75 feet and the red wire, the thin wire, is 200 feet and I wrapped all of that on this coil together and I just took one of the coils that I had left over, one of the spools and wrapped it up on the spool which is how intervertebrate uh, instructs us how to do that and uh, it's supposed to be wrapped together, but I did it just the best I could in the living room. <laughs> I don't have a machine, or I just started wrapping. But this is how it came out. It came out with 250 wraps of the 26 gauge and 650 wraps on the 30 gauge, which gives you a transformer effect on this coil. And this coil is acting uh, not only as a... Uh, pulse coil and then trigger circuit, but I've also got a transformer effect going on in there as this thing collapses and charges up, collapses and charges up. It's it's given me a transformer effect, but anyway, um, real quick to explain how I did it, I just wrapped it all up on that coil by hand and then um, when I got done, I don't have any copper coated welding wire so I just used nails and I found out somebody else is doing the same thing and you just put the nails down inside the coil there and fill it up and then when you're done mix yourself up some epoxy and stick the epoxy down in there to glue it all together and then uh, seal it up and that's that's the coil that is driving this thing and uh, like I say, I, I don't think it would have worked as well had I not done it this way. But uh, the thing was extremely successful um, with that coil. And um, like I say, they, they normally require you a 300 or up on both windings. But this just happened to be uh, the way it came out and it seemed to work just fine. Anyway, that's the little Bedini motor project, uh, the lid motor project. And I also wanted to explain that uh, I've run this on all different kinds of batteries and also a power source. And this is the power source inlet right there for it. And what I did was I just took a uh, 500 milliamp, uh, what they call wall warp um, transformer and used that as the drive power source when I was doing testing and that was very very effective it also um, it was kinda neat because it if I left all this connected it would charge up the battery packs at the same time I was using the power supply so I didn't have to worry about um, recharging these batteries I just turned the motor on and let it run with the power supply then it charged everything back up again so that was real handy and then also of course I have the lead acid batteries and they're very effective and they work real good but the idea on this thing was to see if you were getting energy back out on the back side from the front side and how much it was doing and how long it would run and all that and when you use a great big battery and this is not a very big one compared to the car batteries some guys are using it's to me difficult to judge how much efficiency you're getting out of that unless you discharge these batteries down and then recharge them and discharge them and that takes a lot of time when you're talking about milliamps of power in and milliamps of power out so anyway that's uh, that's one of the things I wanted to explain was the power supply